It is Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. I might want to use a lot of scriptures, but he gave me this whole 13, all these 13 scriptures here. And pray with me as I preach this word. It goes as such. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegrooms tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but you go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they were ready, went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward come also the others, other versions saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now this, this parable is very familiar to all of us. We have heard it many times. So if I can maybe explain a little bit about this. Jesus is using this parable. Oh, if I had to put a title to this, it would be, I don't want to miss out. Okay. So Jesus is using this parable so that his disciples may understand the need to be watchful because no man knows when the Son of Man will return. No one, not you, not me, anyone knows when the Son of Man will return. Jesus, he talks about ten bridesmaids, five that were foolish and five that wasn't. And in the ancient Jewish customs, uh, it was their custom that the bridegroom and his attendants would come to pick up the bride to take them back to the parents' house. The groom would uh, come and, and he would pick up his bride and all her party that's involved and uh, take them back to his parents' home for the wedding celebration. And everything will begin right there. In this story, the bridegroom is late. He is very, very, very late. That's like some of us, I don't know about the women, y'all always on time, but men, when it comes to marriage, we have to really think about this thing at the last moment, and we don't know whether we want to get there or not. Our feet get cold. We start to contemplate it in our mind, is this the right thing to do? But we don't know why he was late. Maybe his parents wasn't finished decorating the house to get it ready for people to come. We don't know that. The Bible doesn't explain. All we know is that he was late. All of a sudden, in the late midnight hour, the, broom, the, broom, 
groom comes and the bridesmaids hear him coming and they shout, here he comes, here he comes. So five of them that had enough oil to last them, they was getting ready to go. But the other five, they up there begging, hey, give me some of your oil, give me some, I need some, I need some. But now I don't want y'all to think that those that have oil are selfish. You have to understand this. They was the wise one. They knew that no matter what it took, how long it takes, they were going to have enough oil to see their way. The five that were foolish, they just thought they were they going to have enough to last for that moment. But they weren't expecting the bridegroom to be late. So, so they was begging and the other ones told them, y'all go by, y'all, so you ain't getting none of this. Ain't that like us? It ain't that they were being selfish, they were just being wise. So, uh, while the other five went out to buy some oil, the groom came. And when the groom came, everybody went to the wedding. And they knocked. They couldn't get in. The party began. We get ready to get married. Y'all too late. So with that said, you must understand that the significance of that oil is that those with oil represent that they were ready. Amen. They were ready for whatever was going to come. Those without oil, you wasn't ready. And that's just like it is in the church. You must be ready when Jesus comes. Right. Amen. There's no other way it can be. You must be ready. Uh, now, when it comes to verse 13, which is the main verse that, that came from the title, that no man knows the day or the hour, that's why you don't want to miss out because we don't know when Jesus is coming. Because if he comes today, you will miss out. And, and, and look, on oh, oh my job, I, the kind of job I got, I'm in transportation. We, we, we go pick up kids for you know, school, take them to school and everything like that. And, and the thing is that if they have to stand on the corner, all we have to do is wait 30 seconds for them. If they're not there on that corner in 30 seconds, they miss the bus. Amen. If they're a house stop, one minute, 60 seconds. Amen. If they don't come out, we don't have to go. You know the time. You know what you're supposed to do. One minute, you don't come out. Down the road we go. Amen. And all of a sudden, you hear on the radio, can you go back and pick up that child? No, I cannot. And some of the drivers say, why? They should have been out there. But they missed the bus. Uh, uh, there, there, are some, there are some people that have great job opportunities but they can't get the job. Why? Because of the fact that maybe they were late for the interview mm -hmm. or didn't show up at all. Yeah. Or maybe they feared that they couldn't pass the drug test. All right. They missed out. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know about why people miss out on things, but that's just the way it is. We can't get promoted on our job because our attendance is bad and we miss that opportunity to grow in the company. I don't know. We just have the tendency to miss out on things that we needed. There's times you go to the grocery store and there's a sale on and you say, I, I'll wait. And when you go back to get it, you miss out. Amen. Now, I want you to understand Amen. this. That out of all the things that I said, missing church wasn't one of them. That's because we feel that we're not obligated to come to church if we don't have to. We feel that we have worked all week, and this is the day that we can rest and catch up on things that we can't normally do during the work. Come on now. But since we are in church today, there are things that happen when you miss church. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, 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 I want you to understand this, that when you miss church, mm, when you miss church, uh -huh. you miss out 
stand on God's power and his presence. Yes, yes, yes. He is here. Yeah. <laughs> his presence is flowing all through yeah, yeah, yeah. the church right now. Yes, sir. yes, it is. Those that are not here, they miss the presence of Christ. They missed out. When you miss church, your witness well, is damaged because you didn't get fueled up to carry you through the week. You lack the determination to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. You lack the willingness to call others to obey. Uh -huh. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul was a great witness of Christ. Yes, he was. Paul said this in Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15 and 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, yeah. be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes, Amen. Yes, when you miss church, you miss your ministry meetings. Mm. You miss having a voice in what was put on the table and what was up for voting on. You're not obeying God's call to serve. Well, The writer of Hebrews 6 and 10 said, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name. You missed out. There, this, this, this one is one of the most important one at all. When you miss church, you miss hearing God's words. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. His instructions. Yeah. You miss it. You, you, you miss church. You miss being fed. His word. Because, because you got to understand that God's word is filled with vitamins that we need to be healthy and strong in his word. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, this parable is a call for us to do a self-examination. Yeah. Are, are our priorities aligned with God's priorities? Or do we have so many things going on that we make Jesus secondary in our lives. Mm. Think about that. What is our top priority? How do you put Jesus in line? Mm. Is it I go to work? I go to the club? Mm. I go party? There's a concert going on? Oh, I get all that so I'm tired. I can't go to church on Sunday morning. Do you understand that missing church slows you down? You don't have the strength to fight the wiles of the devil mm -hmm. when you miss church. It is very important that you come because Jesus said that where the two or three are gathered in my name, He's going to be in the yes, midst. Yes, now, yes. Now, 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 I understand this, this. I know you sitting at home watching it on TV. But you're not in church. Uh, there's a commercial way that you get up and go get something to eat and everything. And by the time you come back, he done preach some other thing and you done missed out. Missing church. But, 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 I want y'all to know this, that I... I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to miss out. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Come on down. See, I don't want to miss out. Uh -huh. I don't know about y'all, but uh, right now, I don't want to miss out. Sure you know why? Uh -huh. Because I want to hear him call my name. Yes. yes. I don't want to miss out, Pastor. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. I want to walk through the pearly gates. Uh. Yes. I don't want to miss out, uh, uh -huh. uh, y'all, because. Because I want to walk on the street of glory. I, I don't want to be missed out because uh, I want the blessing of God to be strolled up on me. Uh, I don't want to miss out because God so loved the world that he 